Hey, back in the kitchen. So today we're gonna make a uh, Roselle jam, which is the hibiscus flower. Uh, Sometimes we use this flower for desserts uh, or we use it to make sorrel. Uh, today we're gonna make the jam. Let's see what happens. Let's go. In the so kitchen. in my hand right now I have the pot. My wife just picked these off the tree. This is the best way to do it because they're fresh. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slice the end off. I'm just gonna peel the pot. That's fresh. That's what we're gonna cook the pectin down in. This is what we're gonna use. They're all fresh, I picked them this morning. <laughs> okay, there you go. She picked them all this morning. Okay. Or I should say last night. Okay, so the reason I say that is, if you notice, it comes right out, pops right out, and we put the rest into here. The, okay pods in, in water. It's gonna be about an inch below, now they float. So just hold one down. And if you get about a thumb piece, that's enough water to start building your pectin. So we're gonna cook this down for about 30 minutes. Then we'll pour it out and it should be nice and gelatinous. That's the pectin that came out of these pods. So if you notice, so if you notice folks, we're 15 minutes into this process. You can see this is starting to get gelatinous. Um, I'll show you a little, little something. If I scrape the sides, you see how it's starting to build up there on the spoon? That's when you know this stuff is almost ready. Okay, we're going to continue to stir for another 15 right. minutes. But if you look here on the end of the spoon, you notice that gelatinous buildup, they don't even come off anymore. That's when you know you're in good shape. So I'm going to give it the, the extra five minutes, but it's ready right now. Okay, so if you look in here, that's our pectin. I'm going to add the, the pods of the flowers from the pot. Okay, we'll continue that cooking process. Get you know, everything you can out of it and continue that cooking process. This will reduce down pretty quick. It's almost like a uh, reduction of spinach, but not quite that bad. Okay. Okay, folks, um, it's kind of broken down. What I got here is a sterilized measuring cup. This one is four cups. Let's see how much we get out of this product. You notice we ended up with just shy of three cups. So we're gonna use sugar in the raw, which is brown uh, turbinado sugar, to sweeten our jam. So this is three cups of sugar. Now, you can always add more. So don't pour the whole thing in. Add it and then taste it. Should you need more, you can always add more. But once you put it all in, it's hard to take out. So let's do it. Here we go. Okay, we're, we're back on the stove. If you look, I've added the sugar. And I'm stirring in the sugar right now. Once again, it didn't add all the sugar. You can always sweeten as you go along. But you don't want to put too much in. I'm going to keep about a half a cup. Now, during this process, there's two things you can do. You can add um, different flavors if you want. I just like it the way it is because it's so good by itself. Or you can add orange, triple sec, whatever you want. If you want to make this an adult jam, you can do that. Um, what else? Ginger. You know, I have candy ginger. You can put that in there and break it all down with the immersion blender. So we added the sugar. And now we're going to use an immersion blender to make it a little bit more smooth. All right, do a little dip test with a good spoon, a clean spoon. It's perfect. Needs nothing else. And we didn't use all the sugar. That's my point. All right, so at this time I'm gonna use an immersion blender. I'm gonna blend it all together gonna bring it back up to a boil just for a minute and then we'll be ready to uh, put them in those sterilized jars that we, we did earlier 
So if you notice, I got my immersion blender. I'm gonna put it in and let's get it as smooth as we possibly can. Let it cool down for a moment. Let's uh, pour it into these sterilized jars. And let's begin that process right now. All right. Here we go. Now when you pour this, you wanna make sure that you leave just a little bit of room at the top of the jar. Okay, so the air process, the air process itself can let the air escape as you tighten the lid. We're going to put this back into boiling water again. So we got one jar. Let's how many jars we get out of this. We got two jars. I might end up with four jars of this. We'll see. Three jars. Look at that. Got four jars out of this. We still got one left. We might be able to get like a half a jar. Let's see what happens. All right, I'm gonna put this down, see if I can get the rest of this out of here. So out of this process, we ended up with four and a quarter jars. Let's put the lids on. We'll put them back into the boiling water and you'll see the process of how the air escapes when we uh, tighten the, the lids up. These are your lids, they come in two pieces. Remember these have been sterilized. We're gonna place them on top of the jars and place them back in the water and you'll see the air escape. Okay, the lids are in, the jars are in, and as you can see, the bubbles are coming up. That's, that's uh, letting the air release out of the, the jar itself. And this is what will cause this to preserve itself. All right, we'll see the process after it's done. Here we are, a couple of days after. I forgot to show you that all the tops have been indented because it's been vacuum sealed. But these are the result jams that are done. And as you can see, all the jams are pretty good. They held up very well. I've been using that quarter, that uh, one fourth jar, and uh, enjoy. The process is pretty simple, folks. Enjoy.